we see here at, the, at this event today an incredible flowering of diversity around what the new economy will look like and the sharing economy and the commons. And I think having networks and people working together is really important. I think it's also really important to be asking all the time who isn't here. Uh, you know, it's very easy at something like this to get very excited about who is here and how many people there are and how fantastic we all are, but who isn't here? I'm really interested with the whole question about when people in the climate change movement talk about bringing diversity in the climate change movement, they generally mean more working class people, more uh, people of colour. And act but actually, what about the where, where are the conservatives? Where are the where are the right wing people in that? You know, it's just as important because these issues become polarised. You know, the left wing like this, the right wing like this. And I don't believe this. And so for me, it's really important that we reach out in all kinds of different directions, not just to the places where it feels comfortable. We all want to collaborate. If you walk down the street and somebody said, I absolutely want to collaborate with nobody, you wouldn't think that that person had good energy. But the truth is that really good collaboration comes from people having a very strong idea about what it is they want to do and finding the partners and the networks and the ways to interconnect that actually get something done. And I think that's why intuition starts to be very important because intuition starts us off. That gives us a good gut check on what needs to get done. And after that, you start having really stronger, rational, strategic objectives. And then you start finding your partners. And then you start building your networks. And then, strangely, I think serendipity happens, right? Because it's within an infrastructure and within boundaries and other things. But it lets you really move in a direction that you need to go in. Where I think movements have an advantage um, is, is that there is incredible diversity. Um, all different classes and ethnicities um, and uh, from different places um, with different approaches and different worldviews. Um, and um, I, I think that's beautiful. It makes it a little bit uh, more of a challenge to organize, to come with a kind of common agenda. Um, but there are, um, I think, plenty of um, uh, common needs and common ground. And I think the most important thing that a collection of mo movements can do is to identify the common ground and not get hung up on specifics that would block something larger, more systemic kind of shift that we need to happen. You no, know, I think we're living in a really amazing time because we have the technology that's moving, uh, giving us the ability to see things that were invisible before. Um, in the maker movement, we're seeing this, this phenomenon where people are being empowered with tools to be reconnected to repair things uh, rather than throw them away. And so we're seeing, the, for me, the convergence of um, three or four big things, which is the collaborative economy, the Internet of Things, the maker movement, and open source, this collaborative phenomenon, this collaborative, what I'll call the collaborative society that we're creating together, it allows us to learn from each other in ways that we couldn't before, um, to share our learnings and to, to make the innovation uh, happen much faster for less money uh, with a smaller amount of capital and time. And to be very resilient and adaptable in the world, that's what we need. Our world combines two things that are wrong. One is we believe nature is infinite, so we have an endless growth economy which destroys nature. And then we think that things that are abundant should be made scarce so they can be market goods. And I think we, in order to survive, we just simply, simple to say, reverse it recognize natural abundance and respect it, and recognize natural scarcity and respect it. Um, yeah, and, and, and doing that with social justice. So these, these are kind of the three planks that need to be combined. And I think the commons can be a glue for that. So I want to replace the idea of labor 
uh, you know, in, in the kind of socialist idea, with the idea of commons. The, and I think this is a new glue that could unite different movements and parties because they're all creating common goods. They all have an interest in creating uh, common goods. Where does it all lead to know? I don't think no one knows. If someone answered that question, they were probably lying. <laughs> um, I think, how can we collaborate? Or, or I think that maybe one of the best things that we can do in terms of collaboration is trying to build um, similar protocols for, for our projects. So, so having sort of our, you know, each of these um, projects or initiatives being able to to really talk to each other, I think that's um, that's the most important thing that we can do in terms of collaboration. So interoperability between platforms, for example, and shared protocols for whatever you're doing. Probably all of them are looking for a more uh, the empowerment of the citizens, but in different in different aspects. I would say gatherings like this one in Wisherfest, where there is a lot of uh, diversity of points of view on the stage, on the people you meet on the corridors uh, or here in the in the garden, is the best way because then you create these these uh, these social bondings, and I think I would say that somehow foster this uh, mentality of I have my position, you have your position, let's let's try let, let's exchange points of view. We are going to be richer because we are sharing these ideas. So not going in a, in a way that is creating conflict or confrontational. Probably not everybody is ready for that because a lot of people they, uh, define their own position uh, in antagony to one another position. Uh, and in this case, uh, probably the, the collaboration is very difficult. Uh, but I think it's, it, it will help the, ho the whole movements to, to be more relevant and to be stronger in, in front of uh, governments or regulators and so on. There does seem to be very common interests and desires for specific futures, but I think we're at a point right now where we need to be really clear what we're talking about. Sometimes we'll use a word such as collaboration or sharing or solidarity, but we mean very different things. And in order to actually have a really strong dialogue that can lead to a future that we're all very committed to, it seems important to be really clear about what the basis is for that conversation. I suppose finding shared definitions that many people can engage with and agree on is a really important starting point for collaboration. If we have different ways of seeing this future that we want to be working towards, or if we're not clear how we relate to one another, it will be really problematic to actually work together in future. It's hard to tell how to collaborate, because we are already collaborating. There are so many circles, so many events, so many reunions all over the world, and we attain this, the same thing. I think it's a question of, we've got the concepts, we haven't got the words, we've got the things we are, are against, but I believe we, not yet, don't know what we're in favor, all of us. When movements collaborate, um, their worldview broadens, and they understand um, that their movement is part of a bigger picture, uh, and become more willing to, yeah, collaborate with other movements to ally themselves with other movements and to broaden the scope of their caring. Uh, sometimes we learn that the thing we identified as the problem is actually just a symptom. So through collaboration with other movements, uh, we can gain a deeper view, a deeper understanding of the origin of the thing that we're trying to change uh, and, and work at a deeper level.